<laughs> oh, the devil. Poke in the eye. Oh, yeah. Oh, that'll make your eyes water. Anyway, oh, have a look at this. Now, I get, I get a lot of emails requesting to send me stuff. And some of it's really good and some of it's like trash. And I don't think my subscribers want to see that. So I'm like, oh, no, thanks. No. But I got this email. I was quite intrigued. Do you want to have this angel's horn? Right. To, all in one turntable. So I thought, oh, do you know what? It doesn't look that bad on Amazon. It, it looks pretty good. Now, I've seen a lot of these uh, cheap turntables. I'm not saying this is one, but see them cheap turntables with built-in speakers? They're awful for hundred, under 100 quid. It's just terrible. But this one looked pretty good. and It's got a half-decent stylus on it. It's, it's an Audio-Technica stylus. I can't rem remember which one it is, but I'll, I'll, I'll see later when I open the box. Now, I'm not a massive fan of having speakers built in to a turntable, simply because the speakers vibrate, they vibrate the cabinet, and then in turn may vibrate the tone arm and the stylus and the cartridge. It reminds me of them sort of music centers years ago we used to have, and it looked like a sideboard when you closed it up, and you, you opened the lid, and there was a record player and a tape deck and a radio in there, and the speakers were built in the front. Uh, but they, they had uh, like a, I don't know if you remember, they had like a, a spring, a, a spring loaded uh, plinth. It was like on spring. So I think that was to try and to alleviate the vibrations from the speakers. I don't know. Anyway, we'll see this. Right. So before we carry on and say anything else, let, let's, let's get this angel's horn <laughs> out of the box and have a look. Okay, so here it is. And I was right about, they've taken, they've taken a leaf out of the uh, 1970s Music Centre playbook. It is spring-loaded. <laughs> there we are. So that should help alleviate any vibrations. I don't know how well it will work, but it should help a little bit to alleviate some vibrations from the inbuilt speakers. Uh, comes with a platter mat. Uh, it came with a two-point cartridge alignment protractor. It's already preset, but it, but I tested it at each point, and it's bang on. So it's good to know, though. I think they put that in as a, you know, just to, so you can check for yourself. Uh, now I've got to say, it doesn't feel cheap. You know, it doesn't feel cheaply made. It's quite solid MDF. You've got your counterbalance weight on here. Now it's using an AT thirty six zero zero L thirty six hundred L cartridge. Now. It's a budget cartridge, but as budget cartridges go, it's pretty good. It's not bad at all. However, the tracking force is a little bit hefty. It's between two and a half and three and a half grams. Now, if you look at my uh, VM95ML on my other turntable, that's only around two grams. It's almost a gram heavier. I've set it to three grams in between. That's what I normally do. Uh, so we'll see how we go from there. And also what I'll do, I'll measure, I'll measure the counterbalance weight now to see if it's accurate. Uh, here you've got your speed controls. You've got 33. Let's do it this way so you can see. 33, 45, and then you've got your Bluetooth. Now this is only a Bluetooth receiver, not transmitter. Um, so you can 
Bluetooth uh, music to this and play it through this, or you can play, if uh, look on the back now, but you can play it to an amplifier if you want to. If your amplifier hasn't got Bluetooth, you can use this. Then you've got your volume here. Now, obviously this is metal. I think the tone arm is actually aluminium, right? I think this is aluminium. This is plastic. That's obviously plastic here. And the, all this round here is plastic, but you know, not bad, not bad. Uh, let's have a look. There we are. This, that's metal there as well. So, okay, so on the back, ta-da! Right, you got your line out. So if you wanted to connect it to an amplifier, you could. If your amplifier's got a built-in phono, you just flick that over, plop to phono, and then you can use the phono on the amplifier. Or if your amplifier doesn't have a phono stage, you can put it on line out and use the built-in phono on this. Now I've noticed it's always, also got an auxiliary in. So you could do an auxiliary in here and play music through an auxiliary in from whatever device you wanted to as well. Right, I just want to check the tracking force. Uh, now I've got the counterweight set at three grams. Let's just see exactly what that's giving me on this scale here. And remember this, is, this should be between two and a half and three, three and a half grams. So I think I got that in the right position. Let's have a look. Okay, 2.61. So it's a little bit out, but I can change that counterweight. That's why it's good to get one of these, just to double check. I will change that so I get three grams. And just to check that I've got the, uh, the correct weight. I've got a little five gram weight here to check. It comes with a five gram weight, Let's have a look. And there you go, that's bang on. Okay, so I had to set it to about 3.3 grams on the counterbalance weight to get it to run about three grams on here. So I'm gonna leave it set at that. Right, so as you can see, it's got no anti-skate on it. So some tables come with an anti-skate device where you can turn a little knob and change your anti-skate on it. So I've got this anti-skate testing disc here, which I used in a recent video. So I just wanna see, uh, what the anti-skate, it should have a, a, an anti-skate built into it, I'd imagine, like an automatic one. Let's just see how good it is or how bad it is. Okay, you should stick it in the center there. And then just drop it down. And if you notice, I don't know if you can see it on here. Let me put that on there so you can see it turning around. So when you, when it comes on, as soon as you move the arm, it comes on. It's not an automatic return, you've got to lift it up and put it back yourself. But as soon as you take the arm across, it comes on. Right, let's have a look. What we got. Ooh. Okay, that isn't the best. It should either stay pretty much in the center or as someone suggested in the comment section on my last video, it should slowly drift across inwards like this. So the anti-skate isn't great on it. It is pulling a little bit to inwards. So a bit of a downward mark for the anti-skate. Anyway, what I wanna test next is the speed of the platter. How f is it going at 45 and 33 and a third? We'll have a look. Okay, so I've got an app on my phone, which you can download, and uh, it basically t tests the RPM of a, of a turntable. <laughs> um, now, to me, it's pretty accurate. I've tried it on a few turntables, and it's pretty accurate. Right, let's, let's test 33 and a third first. Okay, let's start it. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And there you go. It's 33.32, it's nothing, 0.04%, that's nothing, nothing at all. That's almost bob on, so that, nothing wrong with that. Right, let's check the 45, 
put it on 45 now. Okay, start it. So 44.86, 0.32%. And again, it's a little bit more out in the 33 and a third, but to be fair, I don't think you'd even notice that if you was listening to it. So when it comes to the speed of the platter, it's pretty much perfect. Right, okay. So I've been putting it through its paces, played some records, uh, spun a few discs, you know, uh, Tried the Bluetooth out. Uh, now it's only SBC, the Bluetooth, not AAC, anything else, it's just SBC. So make sure your phone or whatever has SBC. Uh, and you know, uh, my expectations were quite low. I have to say, I went into this thinking, eh, you know, you've seen all these budget cheapy ones you're going around. So my expectations were low, I wasn't expecting much. Do you know what? This has pleasantly surprised me. <laughs> it really has. Um, now, I don't know what speaker system, I don't know what amp is in there, whatever. They must be using the Class D in there. Um, but it's got four speakers, two silk dome tweeters, and two mid bases here. They're not particularly big. You can see the size of it there, okay? Not particularly big, all right? But obviously, the box must give it a little bit of bass. Do you know what I mean? It, 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 that, that's what I'm thinking, because... The sound that comes out of this is pretty good. I mean, it's very clear, nice highs, nice mids. The bass isn't bad. Does it go down low, 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 <laughs> okay? But I was pleasantly surprised how good this sounded for what it is. Look, it's all relative. Is it gonna sound as good as a, a separate turntable, an amp, a separate phono stage and speakers? No, of course not. But for someone who's dipping their toe for the first time into getting the turntable, they've only got a small bedroom, they don't want to spend tons of money on an amplifier and extra speakers and whatever. Um, this is perfect. Perfect. Uh, absolutely perfect. Do you know what, right? You could, if you just use it as a Bluetooth speaker, I reckon you'd be happy. Okay, because the Bluetooth sounded fine. Phono stage isn't bad. It's not bad at all. Uh, so what I thought I'd do, right? I thought I'd have a listen to it. So I thought, what other Bluetooth speakers have I got? Okay, so I got, I got a couple of uh, Echo speakers. This is an Echo Plus. I got an Echo Fourth Gen upstairs. And, you know, I use them to Bluetooth too sometimes. Mostly Wi-Fi I do to them, you know, through Amazon Music. But I thought, well, I, I always preferred the sound of the Echo Plus over the Echo Fourth Gen, personally. A lot of people would disagree with me, but I think it did give out a bit of a better bass. So I thought, let's compare the Echo Plus to this at the same vo level volume and see how it sounds. We'll have a listen to this. Right, so what did you think of that? Ooh. Well, personally, I prefer the sound of the record player. I thought uh, it handled the music better. I thought the echo was a very recessed in the mids and the highs. And I thought this produced better mids and better highs. The echo was a little bit stronger in the bass, but that's the only, uh, that's the only place where it actually did any better. Now, I would say, I, Obviously, I'm using Bluetooth over SBC, 
so that at some points I did find that over Bluetooth it's a little bit just a teeny bit right and that's SBC so I would have liked to have seen at least Aptex HD with the Bluetooth a bit of a better codec uh, not so much on the turntable and when you're using the records when you're playing a record the treble's not as tsst, but it is quite bright the treble is quite bright on it um, so are there any things that they could do better well there are a few now the glaring of the glaringly obvious one is that anti-skate that anti-skate i mean i put the the, the tone arm on it when i'm shooting across so I'm not even sure if there's an automatic anti-skate in there. I don't think there's any anti-skate. So that's something we could possibly look to put in there. Or, or maybe if there is one in there and a, an automatic one, sort it out. <laughs> okay. The second thing is, is this platter is quite resonant. So if I compare it to my Audio Technica, watch this now. I'll give it a flick, right? Let me put the mic next to it. Okay. And this one... So you can hear that the audio technical one is quite inert uh, and this is quite resonant. I, now, I didn't hear any distortion coming through the, the needle, but you need a, ideally you should have a platter that's inert. It's not making that dinging noise. Um, another thing they could put on here, which would be good, is a bass and treble, a tone controls. Don't really need a balance at this distance. I don't think you need a balance. But it'd be good to have tone controls on there because even though it's got decent bass um i like it to go a little bit lower personally so a bass volume a bass control sorry would be like whoop yoink have some of that a couple of db on the bass up perfect oh trebles a little bit high just a couple of db less <whistles> perfect that'd be great put some tone controls on it <laughs> come on that'd be great um, so all in all, for what it is, it's pretty good. If I had to give it a score to 10, I'd probably give it a, give it a, a conservative 7 out of 10 for what it is, okay? And like I said, you know, in a bedroom where you don't want to get extra speakers in an amp or you're on a budget, it's perfect. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. But there are some improvements to be made. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section. I'd love to know. If you got this far, thanks so much. And if the ones who haven't, if they haven't got this far, they can naff off. Go on, do, on your bike. <laughs> They're not going to see this. They won't even hear it. <laughs> anyway, I'll catch you in the next one.